Ari, Immortalium here, and recently I bought Tales of Symphonia Chronicles, which contains both the original Tales of Symphonia and its sequel, Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World, in HD. Um, so anyway, I thought I would review each game independently. But before I actually begin my review, I just want to point one thing out, and that is Tales of Symphonia is the first Tales game I've ever played. Um, I've played many other JRPGs, but I've never played a Tales game until Tales of Symphonia. So I cannot compare it to any of the other installments in the franchise. But with that out of the way, let us begin our review. So, let's begin the story. So what is the story of Tales of Symphonia? We're introduced to a village called Iselia. And in Iselia, we're introduced to several of our lead characters. Lloyd, who is the lead character. Kalesh, who is the Chosen, um, of which I will get on to in a moment. Um, Genus, who is um, Lloyd's best friend, and also an elf. Uh, Rain, who is Genus's older sister, and the teacher in the school. And Kratos, um, who is a mercenary. And every so often in this world, um, a person is born called the Chosen. And what the Chosen basically has to do is they have to go on a pilgrimage. Um, this pilgrimage will eventually bring them to the Tower of Destiny, where they will allow um, mana to be brought back into the world for a period of time. So that is the overall purpose of the quest. Now, as you can expect, it's much more complicated than that. And uh, we are introduced to a lot more characters than simply those five. There are twists, there are turns, there are revelations. And overall, the story is actually very well told, with a couple of exceptions. There's a bit I could think of near the end which I thought was exceptionally badly written. But overall, the actual story is very good and kept me um, hooked from beginning to end. Now, about the characters. Um, the characters are kind of archetypes. Um, you know, you have um, Lloyd, who is kind of your stubborn lead character. You have Colette, who is, you know, the romantic interest of Lloyd. Along with the fact that she's, you know, sweet and always apologizing, etc, etc. Genus who, you know, is the Brainiac, etc, etc. So, a lot of the characters are actually archetypes, but one thing I want to point out, and this made me so happy, a complaint that I have of a lot of JRPGs I've been playing recently, for example, Final Fantasy XII, is the fact that we never really saw the characters interacting with each other. Every so often there would be a cutscene where, you know, the characters would talk to each other, uh, you know, about the overall story, but we never actually saw them hanging out together. And so, I was introduced to something beautiful in the Tales franchise when I played Tales of Symphonia, and that is skits. Now, as you can imagine, skits, a lot of them are comedic. Um, the way it works is that as you're traveling around, every so often you will see um, the select icon appear in the bottom left of the screen. And what will happen when you hit select is it will actually bring you into a cutscene um, the cutscene is simply, you know, the characters, you know, in their portraits, you know, flapping their mouths and making expressions every so often. But it's actually them, you know, talking about, you know, whatever's happening at that point in time. Or maybe talking about something else that you've done recently, and just how they react to it, you know, what they think about it, etc, etc. And there's also, you know, a whole bunch of funny ones where it's just simply them goofing around. And that added so much to the personality of the characters. If, if it was only the cutscenes, of the entire game, the characters wouldn't be nearly as deep as the skits actually show them to be. We learned so many things about the characters that we weren't previously aware of and would not have be aware of if we didn't actually have these skits. So I, I was absolutely pleased as hell with the skits um, the, I, and I'm really happy to hear that um, they're present in the rest of the Tales franchise. So that's excellent. Um, the combat system, I want to point out something. Um, in JRPGs in general, um, the combat system is usually turn-based. Um, you know, like, think about Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest, where you select your moves, the characters then, based on a speed stat, etc, etc, will then attack. And then it'll revert back and you have to do it over again. The Tails does their combat system a bit differently. Um, basically, you have a party of up to four, and you control one character. And this character, um, you, you're able to move around. Um, in this game, it's only on one plane, or one axis, but uh, in other games, it's much more varied. Um, but anyway, 
Um, you're able to move your character back and forth along a plane determined by your target. And you're able to then um, actually do um, combos. For example, um, if you mash X, your character will do their standard attack. If you do circle, you'll do a special attack based on um, which part of the directional pad you're actually you know, facing. And square is the guard. Um, against physical attacks at least. Um, a technique is used for, you know, magical techniques. Um, now, it took me a while to get used to this combat system. It's a lot more dynamic um, than most JRPG um, combat systems that um, I've encountered. It took me a while to get used to the controls and, you know, how to guard against certain techniques. Um, but, and that created a bit of annoyance at the beginning, but after a period of time, I absolutely fell in love with the combat system. It is so engaging, combining ver various techniques together, you know, interrupting your opponent's spells, etc., etc. It's a very engaging combat system. Now, I pointed out, you can only control the lead character that you've determined in your party. The rest of the characters are controlled by um, these, by the AI. Um, with certain, you know, parameters based on, you know, strategies that you've set up previous to the battle. Now, there is actually a multiplayer component to the Tales franchise, um, where you're actually able to have other people control the other party members, but I didn't try that. Um, I can imagine, like, considering how long this game is, I put over 60 hours into this. Um, I, I'm not sure what in what situation besides playing with someone you're living with, in which that would actually be useful. So, um, basically, the other party members um, were AI only. And in general, the AI was actually very competent. There was moments where, you know, I was, you know, complaining against the AI um, for, you know, doing something else than I would have done in their place. But overall, uh, the AI was great companions and uh, they were very useful. Uh, they weren't stupid like so many other AIs um, in, you know, these kind of games. Um, so I was very pleased with that. So overall, the combat system is a big thumbs up for me. So let's talk about the graphics now. Um, so, Tales of Symphonia was originally released for the GameCube, and as you can imagine, that means, you know, there's not much polygon counts, um, there's um, some very awkward, you know, spiky characters. The world map is a bit jagged, and, you know, the monsters uh, that appear in the world map are, um, you know, a bit ugly looking. Um, so, from a technical perspective, it's very basic, as you can imagine. It's not going to, you know, compare to any of the games um, released for PS3 as of these days. Like, for example, the other Tales games that are getting released. But, there's one thing I want to point out, and that is the art style really helps, you know, um, keep this game very pleasant looking. Um, the art is very anime inspired. It has, um, you know, a lot of bright colours. The characters all have very big eyes. And um, it, it, the very pleasant and um, clean art style really helps lend um, a lot of beauty into this game. So, um, even though it is very basic looking by today's standards, um, it's still a very pleasant looking game. And now, there's a couple of things I want to point out. So, in the main game, um, you're going to see um, your character's polygon counts quite frequently. In those skits that I mentioned, um, the portraits are anime, and um, they're kind of mouth flapping. Um, so, quite basic, but very clean, very pleasant looking, and of course, it's aged better than the polygon side of it. There are also a couple of cutscenes throughout the game that are actually anime. They were um, animated by Production IG, who animated Ghost in the Shell, Eden of the East, etc, etc. But, there isn't actually that many anime cutscenes. They're very nice and very pleasant and very cool when they appear. But I'd say if you took all the anime scenes in the entire game and put them together, I don't think you would actually get more than 10 minutes. So, very minor in the overall um, scheme of things, but very pleasant when they're there. So basically, the graphics, you know, they're not as great as they once were, as one can imagine, um, considering this used to be a GameCube game, but the art style definitely helps make up for that fact. And actually, therefore, benefits well from a HD transfer. Next aspect is to talk about the music. So, the music in this game, as you can imagine, is quite varied. This is a 60-hour game. I put 60 hours into it anyway. And um, therefore, you're going to come across a lot of different pieces. But the majority of the pieces are, you know, your kind of standard JRPG um, 
pieces, you know, your epic orchestral music, your dynamic battle music, your tragic mu music when, you know, something sad happens, etc, etc. And it's very well done and very nice overall, but I wouldn't say that much of it is particularly distinctive. And I think I have heard that that's a criticism of a lot of installments of Tales, that um, their music, while, you know, very satisfactory and pleasant, isn't quite up to the standard of Final Fantasy music. Um, but overall, um, the music in Tales of Symphonia is still very good. I, you know, I was never hating a piece because of the fact that I've heard it for the one millionth time. Um, so, overall, the music was very well done. Just nothing particularly stand out. Now, the voice acting. Um, in this um, pack, you're actually allowed to have the Japanese on, which I think, from what I've heard, isn't allowed in any of the other Tales games. I think they were advertising the fact that you could actually, um, you know, have the Japanese on, the Japanese voiceovers on, um, was a big deal um, for this, uh, for the release of this. So, um, you know, that's nice, but considering the fact that this is the only, um, you know, release of Tales in the West that has the Japanese so far, I decided I'd, you know, do the English anyway. Now, I've heard a lot of flack um, about the English voice acting in Tales of Symphonia. A lot of people claiming it's annoying, a lot of people claiming it's not well acted, etc, etc. Um, I wouldn't really agree with that. Um, and now, as you can tell from the fact that I was hesitating there, it's not the best voice acting that, um, you know, is possible for this game. That You get your moments of annoyance, um, you get your moments of kind of weird um, dialogue, you know, like, not that the dialogue is weird, but the way the character says it is weird. But overall, I would argue that the English, um, you know, acting in this game overall is a lot better than many of the games that I grew up with as a child. Now, I'd, <laughs> considering how bad voice acting used to be in video games, um, that's not really much of a selling point. Um, but overall, the English dub was actually very nice. You know, I felt the emotion of the characters. Um, I thought a lot of them sounded very cool. I thought a lot of them, um, you know, the voices suited them very well. Um, I don't really recall any moment thinking that characters were miscast. Although I do remember a couple of awkward, cringy moments when um, the way they pronounced the line was completely at odds with um, the actual emotion of that line. But that was, that was far a few between. So, overall, um, the English dub is actually very good, in my opinion. The one thing that um, I would argue that the Japanese definitely has um, the English beat is those skits. Um, in the Japanese, um, they are fully voiced. But because of the sheer amount of them in the um, in, in the game, um, the English version does not actually dub them. So it's just the characters flapping their mouths and you have to read the subtitles. So um, that is kind of annoying. I would have loved for it to have been fully voiced. But considering the sheer amount of them and the sheer amount of voice acting that I would require, I do understand why they weren't voiced. But that it is still disappointing that they weren't voiced. I will just simply say that. I would have loved to have heard the characters actually speak in those lines because it is a bit weird having the characters flapping and having to read. So overall, um, what was my opinion of Tales of Symphonia? Um, it's very good. Um, I had a great time during it. It wasn't the best JRPG I've ever played, but it was certainly not the worst. And as a, a first Tales game to play, um, this was a perfect beginning, I'd say, because it got me used to the combat system, um, it got me used to the style, um, etc, etc. So I think it, this is a great beginning, a great way to um, begin my journey of these Tales games because I definitely intend to get more after I've completed um, Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World, which I've heard isn't as good as Tales of Symphonia, but I'll do a review of it anyway. So anyway, if you're looking for a JRPG um, to play um, and you have not played the Tales games before, I would definitely recommend that you pick this up. And uh, I'm not really sure, I've, ne I've never played Tales of Symphonia on the original GameCube, so I'm not really sure if it's worth getting again um, if you've already played it before. But if you're in the hankering for playing um, it again, this is definitely the way to go. It looks very pleasant um, from its HD master. Um, so overall, what kind of score would I give it? I'd give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, it was a great game and I had a great time with it and I definitely recommend you guys pick it up. Um, so anyway. 
Uh, that's my review. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.